We're on a train to India. All aboard, it's time to go. The driver blows his whistle. Ready, steady. <whistles> Off we go. And that was the introduction to my multi-sensory story, A Train Ride Through India. And I'm going to show you how to recreate the story using some very simple props and how to use the story props to promote areas of learning and communication and just to have some fun. So our story opened when we were sitting on our train to India, waiting for the conductor to blow the whistle to give the signal for the train to leave the station. And I used two very simple props. I used the whistle and I used my clackers. It would be nice if you had two whistles, one for yourself and one for the story explorer. And you can promote anticipation skills. Can the sensory explorer give you the command to blow your whistle? This could be a body movement, an eye contact, blink of the eye, or a verbal communication. As you say, ready, steady, and wait for that response. There it is, I saw you blink your eyes. Go. <whistles> can they copy your action? Can you say ready, steady, go, and can they blow the whistle? There were lots of different options for making train noises. You may want to use some maracas or an egg. A little shaky egg here. I made my own shaker by putting rice inside a tube and filling it in sparkly oil. I placed some rice inside a Tupperware box. This makes a louder sound. Some people might prefer a quieter sound and other people might like a dramatic sound. And can the sensory explorer track that noise? Will they turn their head? Find some mints, they make a nice train noise. Duller sound. And I put some tiles inside this little bag, just little tiles. And when you shake the bag, I found this little wind up train and train track for a pound in my local pound shop. I've got a little trailer that hooks onto it. And it's a wonderful way to explore cause and effect as you wind the train up and let the winder go and it rolls around the track. Can the story explorer copy the action? I open my window to see the sights outside. A blast of hot air hits my face. This is one fun ride. Now I've used a mirror. You could do some joint attention. And the reason I used a mirror is quite often when you're sitting on a train, you can see your own reflection. I like this swip mirror because it has a little bit of handle there where you can hold on to and tighten it round your wrist for some extra security while the story explorer explores the mirror. And do some shared attention, do some smiling and pull some faces in the mirror. To represent the hot air, you could use a hairdryer and you could attach the plug to a switch device. So the story explorer can have control when they turn the hairdryer on and off. And you can explore the settings from high to low with temperature, cool, medium. And you can explore the speeds, slow, medium and fast. Direct the air at the story explorer's hands, their feet, their hair, their arms. I have some very simple fans here. This one is just a foldable paper fan. This squeeze fan is excellent for promoting fine motor skills and exercising those finger muscles. 
for a novelty factor, you can pull the string on this fan and release bubbles. I have some bellows here for a foot pump and you can squeeze using the muscles there to direct the air at the Story Explorer or can they direct the air at you? A nice idea is to use a heated microwavable wheat bag. This can be placed around the Story Explorer's shoulders or on their lap or you could explore a nice fluffy warm water bottle. Now my friend Paula Mills who's a wellness advocate and therapist when she found out that I was doing a train ride through India film she sent me these wonderful oils by doTERRA. This one is lemongrass and this one is wild orange and a nice idea is to place some drops onto a piece of cloth, take your fan or your hair dryer and gently waft so that smell disperses in the air because we need to be careful when we're working with smells because some of our story explorers might find them a little bit overwhelming if we were just to thrust that smell under their nose so by working at a distance this is a lovely way of working with the oils. And can the Story Explorer express a preference? Do you like the lemongrass oil or do you like the orange oil? Offer them a choice of two. So this is all about exploring sensory preferences, likes and dislikes, maybe making rejections. I don't like the noisy air dryer, but I do like the paper fan because I have control of it and it's nice and gentle. A lady comes to sell her goods. She wears a sparkly dress. She tells me it's a sari and she smiles like a princess. So the props I've decided to use here are sparkly material and some perfume. She has henna patterns on her hands, a bindi on her head, a circular little dot of the colour red. So this part of the story is all about having fun with colour. Now keeping with the sparkly theme, I've got a little bag with a simple clasp opening. It makes a wonderful click when it closes and opens. Can the story explorer open the clasp to reveal the contents. Can they communicate a request for help if they would like some assistance? Now I've put inside this little makeup bag a palette and inside the palette are all different wonderful bright colours that you would associate with India. So can the Story Explorer find the colour red? There it is. Would they like you to paint a little bindi on their head? Would they like to paint one on your head? Would they like a different colour? Perhaps they'd like to explore some of these different colours. Can they tell you their favourite colour? And you might want to make some henna markings using a fine paintbrush on their hands and explore different pressures. Some people might like a soft tittle others a deep pressure. An alternative is to use some little red dot stickers, again practicing fine motor skills or requesting help. Can the Story Explorer use the mirror to place the bindi on their forehead? She's selling sparkly bangles. They jangle on her wrist. I pull out a few rupees. I simply can't resist. I've got my bangles here and I've placed them inside a box. Now, if you were to dim the lights, this is going to make this activity really interesting and visually stimulating. 
the light's not picking up because it's a sunny day in here but I've put in a light colour changing light cube I've put in some battery lights a little bit of colourful tissue paper to have a rummage around and I've placed lots of different types of jewellery and bangles and necklaces inside the box so can Story Explorer use their fingers to have a little look through the box and select an item they would like with the lights dimmed you could use the torch and watch all the items sparkle as they search through for a hands-free option head torches are fabulous so this will just strap around the forehead and the Story Explorer can direct the light using their head. And if you're working in pairs or groups, then perhaps one person could shine the torch inside the box while the other person has a little look around. This is a fantastic torch. It's a wind up torch. So the faster you wind, the more light that you get out of the torch. So that's a wonderful opportunity for teamwork. Other than that, this is great on a keyring because the Story Explorer can pop that on their little finger and press. Or we've got a larger torch. You might wish to use a magnifying glass so you can have a little closer look at the items inside this box. And a lot of this is dress jewellery. I've just found when I've been at car boot sales and charity shops. You could add an element of scientific investigation. So I've got a magnet here. Can the story explorer place the magnet in the box and see which items are magnetic? Maybe you could do a little bit of a comparison and find out the items that are not magnetic. Magnetic. Not magnetic. Now our character on the train exchanges a few rupees for the jewellery for the bangles. I've got this edible rice money. It just adds a little bit more fun to the activity. Be allergy aware as you would with anything else. Again, with the chocolate coins for people that might have nut allergies if there were any ingredients in there or dairy lactose intolerant. Now you can count the rupees. One, two, three, four. You can discuss the colors. You could even say that will cost one blue rupee and one yellow rupee or you could count the coins instead you may wish to promote fine motor skills i've got two sparkly pipe cleaners here to make our own bangles with offer a choice would you like the gold or the silver you would like the silver I place some beads inside a little pill box. Again, it's in promoting fine motor skills so that we can open up the box, select a bead and thread it on to make our own bracelets. And they're very easy to secure just by a simple twist. train rumbles through the hillside and as far as I can see are rows and rows of little trees that I'm told are tea. This is a wonderful opportunity for the story explorer to explore their likes, dislikes and sensory preferences. I've got a teapot, got a lovely clattery lid. Can the story explorer grip the teapot? Can they use their thumb? press the lever to reveal the tea bags inside. Now I've filled my teapot with lots of different types of tea. I've got fruity tea bags, minty tea bags, 
and I've also got my favourite, Ceylon. So, I have some lovely Wittard tea here, and this is a Piccadilly blend, so it's got rose petals inside it, and it smells absolutely delicious. Engage the senses. Can the story explorer smell the tea bag? Can they express the preference? Do you like minty tea or fruity tea? You like fruity tea. Wet the tea bag so the story explorer can feel the difference between a dry tea bag and a wet tea bag and squeeze it in your hand so that the tea comes out of the bag. You could do some painting using tea, so you just mix it in with water. You could practice independent skills. Can the story explorer pour tea from a teapot into a teacup? And for health and safety reasons, I always use lukewarm water. Would the story explorer like to taste tea? Explore mixing teas together. Create your own blend. So you could have a pinch of peppermint tea, a pinch of berry tea, and a pinch of rose tea. At 12, the lunch cart rolls down the aisle and I can smell the spice. It's my favourite Indian meal. Spicy curry and pilo rice. So this part of the story is a wonderful opportunity for the story explorer to express their likes, dislikes and sensory preferences, to make rejections, to try new foods and to compare and explore. So engage the senses using fresh herbs and dried herbs. I have some wonderful coriander here. The leaves are so delicate, fragrant, and it tastes delicious. I have some fresh mint. The leaves are so soft to the touch. They remind me of cotton wool. And again, a really fresh taste. And if you rip the leaves and crush and rub them in your hands, it will make those flavors more potent. I have some dried herbs here. I've got some wonderful fennel seeds which taste like aniseed. I highly recommend planting or buying a little fennel plant. They'll grow really, really tall. They'll keep self-seeding every year so you get lots of new little plants. And you can use all parts of the plant. When they flower, they leave these wonderful pollen saturated yellow flowers. And you can eat the leaves which are really, really delicate. I've got some lemongrass, again, if you get pestle and mortar and give this a little bash, this will really release the flavours. I've got cumin seeds, cardamom pods, they're fun to open up and find the little seeds inside. Again, use your magnifying glass to have a closer look. I have some curry leaves, some bay leaves and some root ginger. So it's all about comparing textures. So I have these lemon grass sticks here that are quite hard and solid compared to this delicate coriander. And keep offering choices. Do you like the mint or do you like the coriander? Going back to the ginger root, this is so fun to plant, very easy to grow on your kitchen windowsill. You could tie in some activities for understanding plant life cycles. So I have here some celery and I grew this from vegetable scraps. So you could take your celery and when you've used it, cut the bottom off where the root is, place it in a glass of water and within a week or so it'll start rooting. You can plant it and you'll grow another celery plant. There are lots of different foods that you can grow using kitchen scraps, bottoms of spring onions, red onions and your brown onions. Again, cut that root off, pop it in a jar of water, 
plant it into the soil. Great fun. We travel through the national park. I hear a tiger roar and hidden beneath the undergrowth, a snake slithers across the floor. I've represented the national park by using a piece of bark, running your fingers through the grooves in the wood, smelling its earthiness, the noise it makes. My tiger roaring sound effect I've recorded onto a single switch communication device and I've used a talking tile and popped a picture of a tiger on the front. So press to activate the sound effect. Can the story explorer communicate a request to listen to the sound again? Can they press the device to activate the sound independently? Can they communicate a request for help if they require assistance? Can the story explorer roar like a tiger, record their voice and play it back to them? Rawr, rawr. my tiger voice and they will enjoy listening to their own voice recorded. Now a snake slithering across the floor. I've used this rubber snake. It's just wonderfully tactile. I love the way it wraps around your arms. Perhaps I wouldn't so much if it was real and I was really in the National Park in India but this is just a little harmless rubber snake. Now for an alternative, I'm a huge fan of using packaging and recycling items. And this reminds me of snakeskin. And it was wrapped around some candles that I bought from Ikea. So have a little look in your recycling. In the sky, black clouds form, heavy with their rain. Here comes a monsoon of water, gushing down the window pane. So you could use your mirror and spray warm water. I always think warm water is nice to use. It's more comfortable than using cold water. From the water sprayer onto the mirror so we can watch the warning drops rolling down the glass. You could explore the settings from a fine mist to a heavy downpour. And these are fun. They make a wonderful noise. You fill them with water. Lovely cause and effect because when you push them, the water spurts out of the other end. Alternatively, you could use bubbles. When the bubbles pop, it feels like rain splashing gently on your face and on your hair. If your story explorer dislikes water, then you could use an umbrella, pop it above the head, direct the water around so they can listen to the sound of the rain. So a train ride to India is a real fun story. And if you're working in a group, you're an activity coordinator, or you're in a school or a setting, then there are lots of different ideas that you can use. I like to line the chairs up in twos to tell the story as if we're sitting on a train. You can appoint a train driver at the front of the train to drive the train. You can have a conductor who sells the tickets so you've got some opportunities to work with money skills, giving change, working on the concept that once your money has been spent, it's gone. You could assign an individual to be that wonderful lady in her sari who was selling those bangles and the jewellery. Which jewellery are you going to wear? Don't forget to save some money for lunch. And you could have the waiter or waitress rolling down the aisle with the herbs and the spices. 
for the students and the story explorers to taste and smell. If you have an interactive whiteboard, then you can find footage taken from the driver's cab so the students can face forward and watch as the train rattles down the rails. And you can do lots of different journeys as well. You can journey through snow, you can journey through ice, journey through deserted landscapes. Thank you for joining me on our train ride to India. I hope you enjoyed your adventures as much as I did. Your questions, queries, comments and feedback are always welcome. Head over to the website www.rhymingmultisensorystories.com for lots of free resources, sensory ideas and inspiration. Your questions, queries, comments and feedback are always welcome. You can email me, you can message me through social media or through the website. You can join me on my introduction to multisensory storytelling course, one-to-one -one bespoke training tailored to your needs, groups and inset training also available. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Goodbye.